Hello, I'm Michelle from the Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine, in the children's room. Welcome to part five of our read aloud of Sofia Valdez and the Vanishing Vote, written by Andrea Beatty, illustrated by David Roberts, published by Amulet Books. Let's find out which pet won the election. Chapter 20. Sophia took a deep breath and walked to the swings. Hi, Sophia, said Iggy, jumping off the swing and landing next to her. You shouldn't have done it, said Sophia. It's okay, said Iggy. No, it's not, said Sophia angrily. I wasn't swinging high when I jumped, said Iggy. I didn't get hurt. Not that, said Sophia. I know you stole the vote. Iggy was shocked. I did not, he said. I'm not a thief. I didn't steal the vote. Then why didn't you help look for it with everyone else, she asked. I think you knew we wouldn't find it because you already had it. That's good detective work, said Iggy, but you're wrong. I didn't steal the vote. Sophia looked at him suspiciously. I didn't steal the vote, Iggy continued, because there wasn't a vote to steal. What? asked Sophia. 17 people went into the booth and voted. No, said Iggy. Seven people went into the booth, but only 16 voted. I didn't vote. Why not? asked Sophia. I like turtles and birds, said Iggy. They are both like architects. Turtles grow their own houses on their backs and birds make houses from sticks. But more than that, I like Rosie and Ada. They're both my friends. Here they are talking. They're both my friends and I don't want either of them to be upset. So I just let the other people vote. Sophia frowned. Why didn't you say something when we were looking for the ballot, she asked. I was going to, said Iggy, but everybody was mad about the vanishing vote and I felt embarrassed. And I figured other people knew more about the pets anyway because I wasn't paying much attention during the debates. I was building a tiny igloo out of paper wads. Iggy, said Sophia. I know, said Iggy, but it was inspired by the turtle shell. Sophia shook her head. It's everybody's job to know what's going on, she said. I know, I'm sorry about the ballot, said Iggy, but if it helps, I think you're a good election commissioner and I know you'll figure out what to do. Chapter 21. On the walk home from school, Sophia kicked a small stick off the sidewalk. Pup fetched it and brought it back to her. Sophia scowled and threw the stick. Pup brought it back. This continued all the way home. Iggy didn't vote, abuelo, said Sophia. Everybody should vote, it's important. It is, said abuelo, but a person doesn't have to vote if they don't want to. That's a right too. Iggy thought he was doing a good thing, letting others decide. Not voting makes as big a difference as voting, said Sophia. Iggy thought he would let somebody else take care of it, but because he did that, we have a tie. People don't think one vote makes a difference, said Abuelo, but it does, every single one. If a person doesn't vote, they give up their power to change things. Worse than that, they give up that power to somebody else who might not use it the way they want. It's too late now, said Sophia. Abuelo gave her a hug. After dinner, they went to the library to learn how election ties could be broken. Hold the door, Sophia, called a familiar vo voice. Sophia looked behind her. B was carrying a black duck. Bo followed her with a large lizard on a leash. Both animals wore reading buddy vests. Meet our newest reading buddies, said B. Moby Dick, quack, and the Lizard of Oz, said Bo. We're expanding our program. Wait until you meet Hamlet. He's a pig, said B, but he loves books. Who doesn't, said Mr. Page. How can I help you? You know, there's always help at the library. Sophia told him about the election and Mr. Page led her to a section of the library filled with books about elections. Sophia learned that each election's rules depend on where the election is held. Some election ties lead to a whole new election. Sometimes one official picks the winner. Sometimes they decide with a coin toss. One time a whole state Senate was tied and one seat would decide which party had the power to make laws. The Senate seat election was tied too. 
the governor flipped a coin to decide who would win the state and seat and which party would control the state. I bet a lot of people in that state wish they had voted, said Mr. Page. Before Sophia could respond, Moby Duck waddled by. That reminds me, said Mr. Page, pulling a tiny book from his pocket. What time do ducks wake up? I don't know, said Sophia. At the quack of dawn, said Mr. Page with a belly laugh. Oh, golly, that's a good one. He walked away chuckling. Sophia smiled weakly. She wasn't in the mood for jokes, even good ones. She stared at her notes and sighed. Her research had turned up a lot of information about tied elections. In the end, she had four ideas, but she didn't know which the class would choose, and she wasn't sure she liked any of them. As election commissioner, though, it was her job to help the class figure it out. She and Abuelo left the library and headed home. Here are her tied election ideas. One, Miss Greer decides. Two, vote again. Three, flip a coin. Four, call the whole thing off. Chapter 22. Sophia had thought all night about what she was going to say to the class. She didn't want to tell them that Iggy didn't vote. Voting was secret, so she figured that not voting should be secret too. Toward the end of the school day, Miss Greer asked Sophia about the tiebreaker. Sophia presented what she'd learned about tied elections. Then, as election commissioner, she asked the other students what they wanted to do. Nobody wanted to call off the election. Only two students wanted to redo the entire election. Twelve liked the coin toss because they thought it was more exciting. Two people wanted Miss Greer to decide. No, said Miss Greer, this election is yours to decide, not mine. In the end, the class agreed on the coin toss. Miss Greer handed Sophia a shiny quarter. As election commissioner, she said, you should toss the coin. Sophia took a deep breath. Heads is turtle, she said, tails is bird. Sophia balanced the quarter on her thumbnail for a moment and then flicked it as hard as she could. The coin twirled up, up, up into the air and then tumbled down, down, down into Sophia's open palm. As soon as it hit her right palm, Sophia slapped the coin onto the back of her left hand and the class leaned forward. All eyes were on Sophia's hands. Miss Greer held her breath. At last, Sophia pulled back her hand and revealed the coin. Heads, she said, the class pet is a turtle. Team Turtle cheered. Iggy cheered. Rat, said so someone from Team Bird. Congratulations, Ada, said Rosie, holding out her hands. Thank you, Rosie, said Ada. They shook hands. Soon the class was talking about a good name for a turtle and how to raise the money to buy one. They decided to name the new turtle after the author of Frankenstein. Her name was Mary Shelley. Everyone agreed. The bell rang. Sophia slowly packed her backpack and headed out of school, dreading the walk home. She knew she had to tell Maricela that Miss Greer's class was getting a new pet and it wasn't going to be pickles. Chapter 23. Maricela was talking with Abuelo by the flagpole when Sofia, Rosie, Aidy, and Iggy came out. She took one look at Sofia's face and knew what had happened. I'm sorry, Maricela, said Sofia. I voted for bird, but turtle won. Maybe Mateo is not allergic to birds and it will be okay. Maricela's eyes filled with tears. He's allergic, she said. Oh no, said Sophia. Can we keep pickles, Abuelo? Oh no, love, said Abuelo. Do you remember what happened when we kept him for a week last year? Sophia and Abuelo had kept pickles while Maricela's family went on vacation. Puff didn't stop barking for a week. Pickles was a nervous wreck when he got back to Maricela. Pup and I will keep you company on your way home, Abuelo said to Maricela, whose tears were streaming down her cheeks. I'll see you at home, Sophia. Sophia nodded. Pup jumped into, onto Maricela's lap and they headed down the sidewalk with Abuelo. I didn't know that Maricela's pet bird might need a home, said Iggy. I would have vo voted for a bird if I had. I couldn't tell you, said Sophia. What can we do to help, asked Ada. The questionnaires walked and brainstormed as they went. They reached the steps of City Hall but had no ideas. I feel so bad for Pickles and Maricela, said Rosie. I wish somebody could help. Sophia nodded. 
Abuelo had said there was always a way to help, but what could they do? They sat there for a few minutes when suddenly Sophia looked at the building next to City Hall. It was the library. She jumped up. That's it, said Sophia. There's always help at the library. I know what to do. Sophia told them her plan. Each person had something to do to help. Rosie, Ada, and Iggy took off together. Sophia ran straight to the library, pulled open the massive door, and went inside. Chapter 24, A New Reading Buddy. Sophia found help at the library, and it was speedy. 30 minutes later, she met Iggy, Ada, and Rosie at Maricela's house. Maricela was on the porch with Pickles. We're just playing together a little more, said Maricela. Mom is taking him to the pet store tomorrow. Her voice cracked and she blinked back the tears. We're sorry the class didn't vote for a bird, said Rosie. Me too, said Maricela, but I understand. I think we all understand better now, said Iggy. Sophia smiled at her friend. We do, she said. I have to go pack up Pickles' stuff, said Maricela. Wait, said Sophia, we have a surprise. Close your eyes. Maricela closed her eyes and the questionnaires got ready. Okay, they called, ta-da! Maricela opened her eyes. She was stunned. What? She asked. I don't understand. How could... Sophia went to the library and asked, said Iggy. You mean, started Maricela. Yep, said Sophia. He can start as soon as you want and you can visit any time. Thank you, said Maricela, admiring her beautiful new reading buddy. Pretty bird, squawk pickles, meow, woof. He has a cape that says reading buddy on it. Smart bird, said Sophia. You'll fit right in. I think he will, said Maricela, thanks to you. Do you think the reading buddies could visit school too, asked Rosie. They could even help more kids learn to read. Sophia smiled. She loved how good ideas grew into more good ideas when people worked together. She also loved her friends who were always ready to help. After a few minutes, Maricela went inside. Ada and Rosie walked down the sidewalk together, but Iggy stayed back a moment. Thank you, Sophia, he said. You helped Maricela and everybody. We all helped, said Sophia with a smile. Iggy smiled back. I was wondering, he said, what do you think about a class mascot? We could have another election to vote on it. Sophia smiled, like the lions, she asked, or the bears? I was thinking something more like the Chrysler buildings. Sophia grinned, gets my vote. The two friends parted ways. Sophia smiled as she thought about Maricela and her parrot and Iggy and his vote. Even though it hadn't gone as she had imagined at the beginning, the process had worked. They still had to raise money for the class turtle, and there was lots to do. She thought about Miss Greer, who had been nervous about trying something new and electing a class pet. It really had been a learning experience. Sophia reached into her satchel and pulled out a cookie. She took a bite and smiled. Abuelo had been right too. The election had been a learning experience, but like this batch of cookies, it was a good one. And that is the end of Sophia Valdez and the Vanishing Boat, written by Andrea Beatty, illustrated by David Roberts, published by Amulet Books. Sophia and the Vanishing Boat is actually part four of a book series called The Questionnaires. Um, the first two of our copies are checked out. The first one is Rosie Revere and the Roshis Riveters. Book two is Ada Twist and the Perilous Pants. Book three, Iggy Peck and the Mysterious Mansion, and then we just read book four. So if you like the series, there are more of them. And I'm so glad you joined me today for this read aloud. I'm Michelle at the Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine, and I'll see you next time.